Okay, it finally happened. Webflow? We're breaking up. In this video, I'm gonna go over my replacement tech stack on what I use on my clients' websites from everything from more complicated JavaScript frameworks through to a no-code replacement. Um, because yeah, if you're like me, you might be getting a little bit upset with Webflow and their lack of progress in the last few years. And uh, yeah, stick around and let's go through it. Okay, so for me, the, one of the main sticking points with Webflow is they seem to be chasing the dollars, which is fine, they're a business to do that, but there doesn't seem to be much development or change or keeping up with the competitors. And if you're like me, you are exposed to a number of different brands, different clients, different ways of working, different tools, different frameworks, and every single day there's something new coming on the market. So yeah, and when you start to experience it, you realize how outdated some of the ways of working really is. And when you have a system like Webflow, which obviously do very well in certain types of websites, but as soon as you start pushing outside of that boundaries or outside of the technical functionality within it, then things get a bit clunky and it becomes a bit harder. E-commerce, for example, or let's say web applications or whatever it is on the lines of that, you have to hack around it. And what I'm talking about here is simple quality of life stuff. So yes, they are investing heavily in things like optimize and you know more enterprise grade solutions and testing and all that different types of stuff, which is fine, but that doesn't really translate into the to the developer experience. And what I'm talking about here is simple things like having a an ability to have a utility based class system. So yes, you can utilize and you can hack around this with something like FinSuite's client first, but that creates a really heavy DOM and you know lots of different divs and stuff like that and nesting just to create some form of utility framework. Whereas then you start looking at uh, JavaScript frameworks where, you, where, you, where you're using Tailwind CSS or you are even using a WordPress page builder like Bricks, you're able to add and remove classes independently of one another. Whereas in Webflow, if you create a combo class, at some point, if you go and edit that combo class, it's gonna cause havoc. You can't just go back to the first class and edit that or remove it. And stuff like that is actually becoming quite frustrating. And when I start working within Webflow, I find I really miss those other other technologies and just that simple quality of life stuff. And it seems like they've lost track of that. And it feels like to me as well, like any form of more advanced functionality, you are, you're having to bolt on. You're having to either use a third party system or you're having to hack around the DOM utilizing FinSuite's JavaScript solutions, which should be native. But then you are adding in extra computational time just to kind of hack around the limitations of a platform, which is just insane. You know, give us more nested collections, for example, or don't limit them. It, 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 this type of stuff just creates friction. And then you have to worry about the number of items that you can have or whatever it is on the lines of that. When you are outside of the framework, when you're in WordPress, or if you're in you know, Nuxt or Next.js or Astro or whatever on the lines of that, or a full headless solution, you have none of these limitations. And so I'm just finding that Webflow is just becoming this ball and chain, which is trying to absorb money out from my clients and myself without really having the flexibility or the requirements from my end, what I would like to get out of the platform. And, and so, yeah, so it's become a bit of a pain in the butt. Right, so what is my recommendation? So as I was saying, I, well, I work with lots of different brands and different clients, and they all have different functionality and, and technical requirements. So yeah, I tend to get three different types of clients. I have the more complicated, more enterprise types of clients, which are requiring a lot more API integrations, very customized experiences. They may be integrating with multiple different systems. And my absolute favorite framework for working within this is Nuxt. I find it a absolutely powerhouse, but also very simple and very intuitive, which also happens to be their, their, their kind of their, their their slogan. And Nux for me is a fantastic JavaScript based framework. It is based around Vue. So if you can pick up Vue and you can custom code within that and you're comfortable in there, then Bolting in Nuxt is an absolute epic framework. 
uh, it has one one of the best developer experiences that I ever had. If you want to add in modules like a sw swiper, or you want to add in Sanity CMS, or you want to add in some animation, you can literally just go and install a module, and it is natively integrated, and it just works, and it's just awesome. So if you haven't seen it before, I highly, highly recommend you check out Nuxt. It's got a bit of a learning curve, so if you're not comfortable with code, then start to get your head underneath it. It's really not complicated once you start to understand the basics, uh, and you'll be up and running at no time at all. Uh, equally so, you can just install like Tailwind, and you're good to go, or you've got Shad CN, so you've got, you can copy and paste components. It makes your life beautifully, beautifully easy. Okay, so now if we start going into the, the e-commerce side of things, it's no brainer. You've got either WooCommerce or Shopify, really, both of which I use, and uh, depending on the client, I'll pick and choose. Now, majority of the time, you can get away with using Shopify, and you can purchase a theme, and then you can customize it to your client's requirements. And nine times out of 10, depending on where the client's budget is, they don't need a fully customized store and you can get away with using something that's already pretty much there. And then you can just utilize CSS and a little bit of custom theme work to kind of get it over the line. And then if you needed to, you can always develop it and design it from scratch, but it just comes down to where you are comfortable in terms of coding and your understanding of the Shopify liquid framework. Okay, so when we start looking at WooCommerce or WordPress, I'm finding that I I am absolutely in love with Bricks Builder. Uh, it is what I think Webflow should be in terms of the, the, the just the, the core experience of how you build websites. And yes, there's a cup. It's still in its infancy, so it's a lot newer than than uh, than Webflow is. So it doesn't have all the features and functionality and bells and whistles. And there's a couple of ways that, of working that could be copied from Webflow. But overall, the actual experience, the speed, the the way that it works is just, in my opinion, miles ahead. In small things like being able to switch around your breakpoints. So you can start with mobile first. You can actually design from the, 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 the mobile phone portrait level and then you, you work up your design, which actually saves you huge amounts of time. You've also got this ability, as I was saying, to, to add and remove classes independently of each other. So you can very quickly just export uh, well, set up a, your own framework, your own class framework, import that into a project, and all your classes are set up. There's no redoing of that work. So you can very easily just set up a, a utility framework for yourself within there, you know, margin bottom, margin top, padding right, padding left, background colors, whatever is like that. And because you can just manage it all nice and centrally, it makes your developer experience very simple. Then you've also got the, obviously you've got the power and the flexibility of WordPress behind you, where if you can pretty much think about a plugin, it's pretty much been done. So you are very much not constrained about what you can achieve within the platform. Then you've also got the added benefit of that. You are self hosting this. So there's no control of your data or any res restrictions in terms of way that you can approach it. If at some point you cannot do it from a plugin for whatever reason, then you can utilize your own PHP and write your own stuff. And you've got direct access to the backend and the database. So, so yeah, no handcuffs, which is just awesome. Now WordPress does come along with, uh, I don't know, some people have a bad taste in their mouth about WordPress. And I did the same uh, for many years. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm never working in WordPress. I'm, it is outdated. It is a nasty framework. It's got security issues, whatever it is. I ended up drinking the Kool-Aid in that regard. And it's funny how you kind of go back in time sometimes and reevaluate when you're a bit more knowledgeable. And Anyway, so one of the biggest problems with WordPress was regarding security and its update and its maintenance that you really need to do because you are needing to maintain your own server. Now, if you use a good hosting provider or a managed hosting provider, like the sponsor of this video, Cloudways, then a lot of that heavy lifting is already done for you. So Cloudways has fantastic security. They, their servers are excellent, really performant. They are easy to configure, easy to manage. And if the wheels do come off, you actually have a help team that you can get in contact with. I know, crazy. But yeah, 
Cloudways is a fantastic hosting provider and their technical support is absolutely fantastic and I highly, highly recommend them. So yeah, I know it's been a bit of a moan at Webflow, but quite frankly, when you start to look at different ways of working, you actually find that there's some pretty big flaring holes and that really comes down to flexibility. So the more you build for different clients, the more you realize that there's a lot of commonality in terms of functionality, but then every single business has something different. And working within these platforms, so Shopify being probably the most restrictive, but when you're working within uh, something like Nuxt or Next.js or something on the lines of that, you have complete power over your clients' businesses, the way that they present themselves. And then if you are not comfortable with that type of framework, you've still got the ability to fall back on something like Bricks in order to be able to push out a absolute fantastic product faster, more performant, and with more functionality. It's a no brainer, really, if you think about it. Anyway, that's the video. I know it's been a short and sweet, and uh, yeah, catch you later. Bye.